Good evening all. Welcome to today's Cancer Healing Journey Talks. Myself, Annie Jones from Community Outreach Team of Zenonco.io and Love Hills Cancer. Cancer Healing Journey Talks helps cancer survivors and caregivers to share their journey with vast number of survivors and caregivers who have traveled or been traveling through this journey. This can inspire and motivate them for their faster recovery as well. I would like to introduce today's speaker, Shannon. She's a breast cancer survivor and she's also an experienced healthcare leader with dynamic work history in various demographic areas and complexities. So welcome to today's session, um, Shannon, over to you. Great. Thanks so much for having me on today. It's great to be part of the cancer community as we're encouraging one another just on our different journeys. And so for me, within my journey, cancer has kind of been a familiar foe for me for a number of years. So my grandmother had uh, thyroid and um, endometrial cancer in her 60s, and my dad had colon cancer in his 50s. And so watching both of them struggle with the disease and ultimately succumb to it made it even more challenging for myself to kind of envision my own future after I was diagnosed with cancer. And so I can still remember the actual kind of sequence of events like it was yesterday. So a very vivid memory for me. So my husband, Josh and I, we were sitting on the couch and kind of hanging out and just goofing off. And I went to kind of playfully pout. And so I crossed my arms and God just put that on my fingertips right on that lump. And so it was fairly big. It was about the size of my fingertip. And as I pressed down, I'm like, oh gosh, this doesn't feel right, you know? And then I had Josh feel it and his demeanor just immediately sank. It's like he knew that it was cancer. Me, I'm a pretty positive person. And so I was like, of course this shouldn't be there, but I'm not even 25 yet. So what are really my chances that it's cancer? Of course, I still needed to get it checked out. So that was over the weekend. So I had to wait for the doctor's office to open back up on Monday. And they got me in the same day. So I went and saw my nurse practitioner and she felt it. And she's like, I don't want you to worry. You have nothing to worry about. It's definitely not cancer. And I was like, whew, right? What a sigh of relief. She still wanted to err on the side of caution, have me go get some imaging done just to see what was going on. So they referred me to the breast care center and they got me in that same day, which I was super surprised because it was late in the afternoon and it was getting closer to closing time for them. So I headed over there. They were doing the ultrasound and the tech had the wand on the lump and then she started moving up into my armpit and I'm like, oh gosh, that doesn't seem good. And so I started to have that, that sinking feeling again. And so they wrapped that up and had me go wait back in the waiting room until the nurse came in and told me that it's a moderately suspicious lump. So they actually wanna do a biopsy. Can I come back later in the week to have that done? And so I think I'm starting to get a little overwhelmed. And I was like, you know, I can't because I actually work when I really should have been prioritizing my health. It was more of a, an avoidance mechanism. And so that nurse really realized the kind of shock that was setting in for me. And she's like, okay, hold on. And so she scurried out and came back into the room as I'm still waiting for my gown. She's like, I found a doctor who's going to say, we're going to get this done today, which was amazing. So we did the biopsy that same day. She told me I'd get my results in two to three days and they'd call me. So two days later, Josh and I are hanging out on the couch again, and my phone rings, and it's after 10 o'clock at night at this point, and it's the nurse from the cancer center, and I was like, oh gosh, not good news if she's calling me this late, right? And so I answered the phone, and she's like, hi, Shannon, are you home from work? Are you with your husband? And, you know, it's such a negative circumstance, but this nurse was so kind and compassionate, so she was really a kind of positive light in this entire situation, waiting for me to be home from work. It was just awesome experience from that perspective. And so after I answered yes, you know, it's home, I was with Josh and she said, hey, we've got your results, I've got some bad news, it is breast cancer. And I just kind of stopped listening at that point, you know, she paused and then went on with some more information, but I was just, just taking it all in at what she had told me. So kind of fast forward there, I really start my more treatment journey from that perspective. And so I went and saw an oncologist, a medical oncologist, and had some big, big decisions to make. So my official diagnosis was stage one invasive ductal carcinoma that was triple positive. So it was hormone sensitive as well as had the HER2 positive. And so it was highly differentiated and fairly aggressive. So my oncologist wanted to be aggressive with treatment. So did I, right? Kind of given my family history, I had a lot of concerns around that. And so I was like a lot of breast cancer patients had to decide between lumpectomy and mastectomy. And it's not an easy decision. There's a lot to process with that. And so my surgical oncologist really was kind of a supporter of me having a lumpectomy. I hadn't had kids and with my age felt like that would be the way to go. 
But for myself, I really wanted to do a mastectomy. I wanted to have that greatest risk reduction that I could. And that's ultimately what I went with. So I had a bilateral mastectomy with reconstruction. And I felt super confident in my decision. I have no regrets with that. My uh, surgical oncologist also recommended that I do genetic testing. Felt like there could be a genetic component and kind of have that looked at. Thought I might be positive for the BRCA gene just based on my age. And I wasn't, but I did have two other gene mutations. And so one is CHECK2 that increases uh, breast cancer risk, and the other is associated with Flynn syndrome, which increases your risk for just various types of cancer. So for anyone who is potentially considering genetic testing, or maybe you have some family histories that are kind of unseemingly related when it comes to cancer, just have that conversation because it can really kind of help guide some of those decisions that you're making. My a surgeon ended up telling me she felt like the mastectomy was the right decision after all. And then it can really kind of help with some proactive monitoring. So that was beneficial. I didn't have to do radiation since I had the mastectomy, but I did have to do chemo. What I wasn't expecting as part of um, my chemo journey was the potential for infertility. So I was the youngest one in my family to be diagnosed, and it just wasn't something that I was expecting. So that one really hit me hard. And so my um, oncologist helped with some suggestions for things that we could do to potentially preserve that potentiality. So initially, I did chiropreservation, so an egg freeze. So I did a cycle of IVF, which was an emotional roller coaster, not just because you're getting injected with all kinds of hormones, but when we actually went to do the egg retrieval, I only had one egg that was actually mature, which isn't great, uh, just looking at an odds after for implantation and everything. So that was really emotional for me, but my doctor, you know, we didn't want to delay chemotherapy anymore, but she had come across a study using ovarian suppression to potentially preserve fertility function. And so it's a monthly injection and it basically shuts down the ovaries and puts you into a drug-induced menopausal state. And that way they aren't taking up that chemotherapy. And once you're done with treatment, that that function should come back and you would hopefully be able to have children. And so that's what we chose. Josh and I had only been married 10 months. Kids weren't even on the radar for us at that point. And I just wasn't ready to let go of that option. So that kind of gave me peace of mind as I was going through that part of the journey. So I did my six cycles of chemotherapy. I did a year of a monoclonal antibody herceptin. And then I continued the monthly injections for five years combined with some oral medications. And so in January 2019, I hit my five-year mark. And after some dialogue with my oncologist, I was able to successfully stop all of my medication. And so looking back on my journey, you know, when I first started, it was really challenging for me to even envision that future after my diagnosis to now being medication-free and enjoying life with no evidence of disease. All right, Shannon. So uh, have you ever thought of doing any alternative treatments like Ayurveda or naturopathy during your cancer journey? What was it? Sorry, have you ever thought of um, trying any alternative treatments like naturopathy or Ayurvedic treatment during your cancer journey? Well, within my cancer journey, it was more just all allopathic. So it was really just that dialogue with my um, healthcare team and what they were recommending. All right. So how did you manage your emotional well-being throughout the treatment? Yeah, so I uh, support groups were huge for me. So my family was really, really supportive through that whole process. So I had Josh, my mom, my brother, some combination of them were always uh, attending my infusions with me. I had great support just from my extended family and friends in my church community. So there were a lot of people who really rallied around me. There are also a lot of support groups out there. Uh, one that I discovered after the fact was the Young Survivor Coalition that really focuses on young cancer patients. And so that has been beneficial as well. But community is so important going through this experience. And so if you don't have a strong support system, I would recommend finding one. Your healthcare team can often make suggestions for local or global groups to, for you to connect with because you just don't want to isolate yourself. All right. So have you made any lifestyle changes during or after the treatment? Yeah, definitely. So for me, I think there were kind of two big buckets that they fell into. So one is just around overall wellness. So I did a lot of activity. I've been an active person, but just being more intentional with workouts and things that I really enjoy. 
And then also diet kind of fell into that one as well. I grew up on a beef farm. And so I've always eaten a lot of meat, but now with some of the studies that just kind of look at that potential link between certain types of meat and cancer, we switched to a plant-based diet uh, several years ago, and I've just been feeling really wonderful on that diet. So we continue to eat that way. The other is around finances. So cancer are certainly an unexpected diagnosis, especially at my age. And so really put into perspective what was important. And so for me, that was my faith, family, friends, quality time, travel. And so what we wanted to do was really just kind of prioritize so we could live a little more intentionally. So we put ourselves on a budget and really balancing enjoying life with saving for the future with our goal being financial freedom. And so that's been a journey that we're on and just being able to travel and enjoy life. That's great. So how did you overcome your fears of treatment or any side effects? So for me, uh, side effects were, I don't feel like any chemo session was ever the same. I always had different things popping up, but what the biggest challenge for me was more physical changes that really caused an emotional toll. So when you're young and you, you're kind of in your prime of your life, you want to feel beautiful and confident. And, and that's really challenging with some of the changes that your body goes through with cancer. And you know, I was, of course, expecting to lose my hair, but I wasn't necessarily expecting it to be so thin when it came back and my eyebrows didn't really return. And so I had attended uh, a class through the Look Good, Feel Better program that really gave some different tips and tricks and really helped you with your perception. And so the focus has been more on what I can control to help with some of these. And so one is knowledge is power, right? So being knowledgeable about the different options that are out there for you. And the second piece is taking action. So focusing on what I can control with different hairstyles for kind of making my hair look fuller and different techniques for putting back my eyebrows or putting them on. So it's, it's been beneficial in that way. That's great. So what do you think about the various stigmas um, regarding, especially regarding breast cancer, cervical cancer? So there are lots of stigmas around those cancers around the world. So what do you think about those cancers? I mean, those stigmas, sorry. Yeah, so that's a great question. So one of the big ones, I think, uh, for just cancer patients in general is the the cancer diagnosis is a death sentence, right? And that's something that I even fell victim to just with my own family history. And it was really hard, like I said, for me to kind of see that future impact, but a diagnosis isn't the end. Treatments continue to advance and continue to improve. And so it really is just a chapter of new growth for you. And then the other one that really sticks out to me is just blaming and shaming cancer patients. Like they did something to cause this no one wants cancer, right? It's not fun. And so I, I disagree with that wholeheartedly. That negativity doesn't help anyone. And so just being, surrounding yourself with a community that supports you on that journey and brings you support in a positive way. All right. So how much do you think um, the importance of awareness to the public regarding various types of cancers? What was the... Sorry, um, how much do you think the importance of awareness to the public? So regarding various types of cancers and their treatment. Yeah, awareness is super critical. So when my dad had his colon cancer, I felt like breast cancer got more of the awareness. It definitely is something that garners a lot of attention. And so it felt like some of those other ones didn't quite get that same level. I think awareness for any type of cancer is very important. And anytime that you have a concern or you're not sure, it's better just to get that checked out because the earlier that you find something, the easier it is to treat and the better the outcomes. All right, Shannon. So one last question will be, if you have to sum up your journey in one sentence, what would that be? One sentence, I would say, I guess kind of two parts. So one is uh, faith first. So God's in control. And so just be joyful and hope, um, patient in affliction and faithful in prayer. And the other, I would say diagnosis doesn't define you're more than your cancer and it wants to lie to you and limit you, but you still have an impact to make and a life to live. All right. Thank you so much, Shannon, for the wonderful session. So I'm pretty sure that this session will really motivate survivors and caregivers out there. Thank you so much once again. 
Thank you for the opportunity.